Hi, my name is Ale, and in this video we will learn how to make a network request to get data from an API, as well as how to decode a JSON response using Swift and SwiftUI. We're going to be using a programming quotes API to build a simple app that shows a random programming quote. If we look at the programming quote API, we see that we get a JSON response when making a request to get a random quote. The response has the following format. The response is a JSON dictionary which has four key value pairs. The first pair has a key of underscore ID and just provides an identifier for the quote. The second pair has a key of EN which stands for English and is the actual quote or phrase that the request returned. Then we have the key author, which maps to the quote's author. And finally, we have the key ID, which also provides the quote's identifier. So let's go back to Xcode and define a structure that will represent a response obtained when making a request to the random programming quote API. Let's add struct quote data. We need to add a variable for each of the keys in the response. The first key is underscore ID and the value of this key is a string, which is the quotes identifier. Then we have var en, which is also a string, including the quote. Then we have var author, Again, this is a string. And finally, we have var ID of type string. Now, if we want to parse a response that we get when making a request, we need to make sure that Swift understands that our data can be decoded. What we can do is make sure that quote data conforms to the decodable protocol. Now, we can use a decoder to decode a response and get each of these four values. So now let's go back to content view and add a state variable at state private bar quote data, which will hold an optional quote data object. And let's create a method that will actually make a request to the programming quotes API to get a response. And we'll make sure that the response is parsed so that we can show it in the view of our app private func load data. The first thing we want to do is create a URL. So let's go back to the API's documentation and copy this URL. I'm also going to add it in the description below so you can copy and paste it from there. guard led URL be equal to URL with a string and if we're not able to create a URL, then we can return. And now we're going to add a URL session data task so that we can get the quote data from the URL that we just created. URL session dot shared dot data task with URL and a completion handler. So for the URL parameter, we'll provide the URL that we just created. And in the completion handler, we're going to get three different objects. We're going to get a data object, a URL response, and an error. We're going to be focusing on this data object. This is where we'll be able to get the JSON data from this URL. The first thing we're going to try and do is unwrap this data. So data response error in. So let's try to unwrap it. Guard let data equals data else return. Now, if we're able to unwrap this data, what we want to do is decode it or parse it to create a quote data object. The response is in a JSON format, and so we can use a JSON decoder to decode the data, and we will use these four properties as the keys and the values will be whatever type we said that the key maps to. So what we're going to try to do is use the JSON decoder. If let decoded 
data be equal to try question mark because the JSON decoder can throw an error we have to add this try statement JSON decoder dot decode the type of object that we want to convert this data to is a quote data dot self from the data that we just unwrapped so if we're able to decode the data that we got from the request, then we can assign our quote data state variable to be equal to this decoded data. Since the quote data state variable will modify the UI of our app, we need to assign it in the main thread. To achieve this, we can use dispatch queue dot main dot async. And inside this block, what we'll do is self dot quote data and assign it to be equal to decoded data. The JSON decoder will automatically use these four properties as the keys to access the values in the JSON dictionary that we get from our network request. And we're able to achieve this because we made sure that our quote data structure is decodable. So now that we have our data task, all we have to do is actually send the request. To do that, we need to add a call to resume. So we can add dot resume. Now let's go back to the body section of our app and actually add the UI that will show a quote and the quotes author. We can get rid of this text and we're gonna add a horizontal stack or H stack. Inside this horizontal stack, the first element we'll add is a spacer. And then we're going to add a vertical stack or V stack. And we want to make sure that the alignment is trailing. Inside our vertical stack, we're going to add first a spacer. And then we're going to add two text elements. The first text will show the actual quote. So text. And here we're going to use quote data dot en since that's the quote. And if it's not available because our quote data is optional, then we can add an empty string. And we'll modify the font so that it's title 2. Now we're going to add another text and here we're going to show the quotes author. So we're going to add in quotations a dash and we're going to try to get the quotes author, quote data dot author. If it's not available, then we can add an empty string. We'll also make the font to be title two. And we're going to add some padding to the top of this text. Now we're going to add another spacer. And after that, we're going to add a button, which when pressed, we'll call this load data method. Button, action. The action will consist of loading the data. Load data. And for the label, we're going to use an image. Image with a system name that is arrow dot clockwise. We're also going to make sure that the font for this button is title. And we're going to add some padding to the top. Finally, we're going to make some modifications to the text alignment. We're going to do that under the horizontal stack dot multi-line text alignment and this will be trailing. We're also going to add some padding around the whole of the horizontal stack. And finally, we want to make sure that when our view becomes visible that we show the first quote that the user will see. So we can use the onAppear modifier and the action we want to perform is load data. So now let's go ahead and run our app and see how it looks.
As you can see, we now can see a quote and we can also see the quote's author. And if we press this button, we should be able to see a new quote. Great, so we can press this button continuously and we should see a random quote every time. Cool. So that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you want to learn more about iOS development with Swift and SwiftUI, make sure to subscribe to my channel as I'll be posting new videos very soon.